Uh, he said, you mentioned that Jesus took our sins with him into the grave. I guess I had never heard that stated before that I can remember. Normally, just thought our sins were nailed to the cross and the Lord declared it is finished. Well, it is finished actually pertains to the law of Moses. He has finished the work that God set forth for him. The man who does the things of the law will live. And so he did the things of the law and he will live. Okay, and through him we have life. But um, I am interested in the concept of the sins taken in the grave. And so I just typed up a very short thing for him so you can understand what I'm thinking when I say that. Okay, first, you heard the gospel. Christ died for our sins. Christ was buried. Christ rose again. My answer to him, it says that he became sin so that we could become the righteousness of God in him. That's 1 Corinthians 5.21, okay? <clears throat> or I'm sorry, 2 Corinthians 5.21. He was our sin bearer. Now, this all takes you back to the Old Testament, Leviticus chapter 16. That is where all the symbolism of the Day of Atonement, the, the sacrifice for our sins, the carrying away of our sins, the covering of our sins, all of it is dealt with in Leviticus 16. It is a great study. I think it was three sermons. It is well worth your time to watch those. But he was our sin bearer. They had a scapegoat known as the Azazel. They would have uh, two goats, they'd draw lots, and then the lots would be chosen. And one would be a scapegoat. They would confess the sins of the wickedness of the people of Israel over it. That goat would be taken out into the wilderness and released, okay? And it was him carrying away the sins of the people. Then the other goat was the goat of sacrifice, the atoning sacrifice, and that one had first the high priest would sacrifice for his own sins because he was not a sinless person. And then after that, the goats, um, for the high priest, it was a bull. For the, uh, sacri the sins of the people, it was this second goat. And he would sacrifice and he'd go in and he'd uh, put the uh, blood before the atonement cover, sprinkling it seven times in front of it. Okay, anyway, so that's the, the scapegoat, carries away the sins. The other one covers the sins. Every single picture, every single uh, word in Leviticus 16, everything points to Jesus Christ, the high priest, the bull. The, as a matter of fact, the, the bull is right there in the very first sentence of the Bible. I won't get into that now, but the high priest, uh, the sacrifice, the bull, it's all right there in the first sentence of the Bible. But um, the uh, high priest um, is a picture of Christ. The scapegoat, the Azazel is a picture of Christ. The person that takes the scapegoat out is a picture of Christ. The sacrificial goat is a picture of Christ. The garments that the high priest puts on are a picture of Christ's first advent. Everything points, everything points to it. Okay, so he became sin so that we could become the righteousness of God in him. He was our sin bearer. Okay, some people say, well, that was Satan. That wasn't Satan. Some people will say, well, that picture's this or that. It pictures Christ's work. Okay, Satan is a punk. He doesn't even deserve to be in the Bible and he's incidentally mentioned most of the time. What we see it picture it is the work of Christ overruling those things that Satan has introduced into the stream of time. Okay, obviously the grave means dead. When Christ went into the grave, it means he's dead. He died on the cross, he was buried, okay? And that equates to his death on a cross. But Paul specifically calls his burial into the gospel. Why would he do that? If it was just the death of Christ, we'd say, well, he died on the cross and that's it. And then he goes further and says in Colossians 2, 11 and 12, in him you were also circumcised, speaking of you and I, circumcised, made without hands by putting off the body of the sins of the flesh. Circumcision, the body of the sins of the flesh. It's cutting away the sin nature by the circumcision of Christ. Buried with him in baptism. So he's now equating us with the burial of Christ. Well, if he became our sin bearer and our sins went into the grave, and he came out without our sins, then the picture is being made. And that's why we get baptized as a picture of what Christ has done for us. But the actual baptism is, has nothing to do with water baptism. It's what Christ did for us, okay? So, want to keep our category straight. Buried with him in baptism, in which you were raised with him through faith in the working of God who raised him from the dead. We are being given symbolism here. Obviously, we did not get buried. But Paul says we're buried. So obviously he's giving us symbolism. So Paul is making a point. Christ died for our sins. That is the first goat of Leviticus 16. Christ carried our sin away. The second goat. Actually, I think I should say the second and the first because the Azazel goes first, I believe. Anyway, um, but first and second. You've got the Azazel and you've got the sacrificial. They're both pictures of Christ. He bore our sin into the grave. 
a picture of the goat being out in the wilderness. Christ went into a, the unknown place, okay? If our sin stayed with him, he would never have resurrected. And so the symbolism is that our sins have been forever removed. The scapegoat, the Azazel, he had no sin of his own. He came out without sin. Thus the sin is buried and it is forgotten. We essentially were buried with him and raised with him. It is a logical point of doctrine that Paul wants us to understand. 